right now so so uh, before we start uh, we had two extra speakers that submitted their presentations I don't know if they're in the room and they want to do their presentation after mine uh, we had one from cap digital you want to do it after me yeah perfect so we need to put it in the system yeah and one from IMEC I don't know if the speaker is here and wants to do it after her So we're gonna start. Uh, welcome to the, this presentation about the two new topics for the, the next generation internet. Uh, my name is Luis Martinez, I'm from the commission. Let's start by explaining a little bit what the next generation internet is. Uh, we call it the Open Internet Initiative. It's a new initiative that we're working on. That we're basically trying to go back to the human-centric vision of the internet. Uh, in this case, for example, we know that the European Commission is very slow when it comes to targeting certain groups of innovators, internet innovators especially. And we're trying to do new approaches in order to reach them, to reach those communities. Mm, one thing that was a very, a lot of, we have received a lot of complaints is that the projects of the commission are too long, normally two, three years. And for startups especially, it's not valid because a startup doesn't know what's gonna, where it's gonna be in three years. So we're for good tar targeting in short research cycles and short validation cycles. Um, we're using the cascading grants mechanism, which, we, which is a very agile programming with flexible implementation in order to reach these communities. And NGI supports the human-centric internet vision, which is basically means give back control to the user. Uh, this is the in next generation internet in Horizon 2020. These are all the calls that are related to NGI. We have AI, Internet of Things, the global social sphere, interactive technologies, multilingual, inclusive, and ours, NGI Open Internet Initiative. There are some areas that, is also, that are also related, like 5G, cloud, high performance computing, big data, and cybersecurity. Uh, the subgranting mechanism that we're using is, is very special. Uh, basically, we have one coordinator that submits the project to the call of the European Commission. It's run by organizations in the ecosystem, and they have to have leadership in their research area. In, in our call, they get a budget of 7 million euros for a two, three year long project, and 80% of that budget has to be distributed to the subgrantees through open calls, and the procedures are adapted to the stakeholders. Once they, they launch the open call, the open call, they will look for subgrantees that are agile and focus on a specific project, and specifically we're targeting internet innovators, high-tech startups and SMEs, researchers, developers. They will carry out the research and innovation work. And on, on average, they will get around 50,000 to 200,000 euros, short projects, less than a year. Uh, the coordinators will have to perform activities such as monitoring, mentoring, coaching, apart from defini defining the call and topics they will have to deliver solid value-adding par uh, services package to the third-party project and manage the full life cycle of the project. This year, we finished our, our, first, our, our first call. We're using this cascading mechanism. Um, and in order to support this, we have three coordinating super actions. Uh, one of them is the technology harvest and transfer. One of them is the outreach office, communications. And one of them is the technology strategy and policy. These three support actions support the four 
projects that we launched using this call. One of them is on decentralized data governance, two of them on privacy and trust enhancing technologies, and one of the last one in discovery and identification technologies. They are open their, uh, two of them are opening their calls, they opened their calls at the beginning of December, in fact, and the other two will open them at the beginning of next year. And we'll see how they deliver and how it works. We're gonna follow it carefully. Uh, regarding ICT31, this is the United States Europe uh, collaboration on NGI. There are these two projects, and they're doing also mirror projects from the National Science Foundation. All right, let's go to the call. ICT24 has three subtopics. The first one is strengthening internet trustworthiness with electronic identities. The second one is service and data portability. And the third one is open internet architecture and renovation. The call for these three RIAs, uh, Research and Innovation Actions, is already open, and the deadline for the submission of proposals is 28th of March. The budget for each of them is seven millions, and again, they have to use some granting mechanism, which means that 80% of the budget will be distributed to the subgrantees. Now let's get in detail into each of, each of them. Regarding the strengthening internet trustworthiness with electronic identities, this is the work program text. This is how it is in the web page. Um, it is important, this is very important for us because ident identity, electronic identities are at the heart of the internet. Uh, the whole inter ex internet experience is based on identity. So for us, this is a challenge because we're looking for a multi-platform architecture that will support EIDs uh, with reputation systems, with verification of attributes, pattern analysis, etc and that gives back the control to the user about his identity. Regarding service and data portability, uh, this is a well-known issue. issue. Uh, there are challenges across platforms, especially now with the GDPR, and in our view, we should provide trusted technologies that would allow users to move from one provider to the other uh, without any constraint or limitation. We expect that the human-centric internet will make internet portability simple transparent, and especially user-triggered. Having the, the user in control of their data, where it is, where it's gonna be, et cetera. We're talking about not just personal data, but the services, the contents, anything associated with your identity. You have to be in control of where it is and where you want it to be. Regarding the third one, architecture innovation, this is a serious attempt uh, to renovate the internet architecture because we believe that it's needed. Uh, most of the protocols have not been adapted, I mean, have not really changed much in the last 20 years. So we think that some of them need some redesigning. And uh, this topic will support communities of developers that will ensure uh, this renovation or evolution, if you wanna put it like that, as well as increasing efficiency, improving scalability, security, resilience, and all towards the objective of human-centric internet. Uh, in this context, we're aiming at groups of that could audit or test, improve protocols, open software, open hardware. Some of the examples are those. Yeah. This is the other part of the call. Uh, this is the other call, ICT31. This is the United States Europe cooperation. Um, basically, we're focusing on enhanced cooperation in NGI, including especially policy cooperation. Uh, increasing the synergies between NGI and then tomorrow's internet program from the National Science Foundation, and developing inter interoperable solutions and joint demonstrations, contributions to standards, etc. This call is also open already, and the deadline is the same as for our IGT24, which is 28th of March, and the first call for subgrantees will start on the first quarter of 2020. The budget for this one is 3.5 million, and again, 80% of the budget should be distributed for third-party support. This is more or less a, a timeline of our projects and how we're doing. And as you can see, the three that just started now, the other the three on privacy, decentralized, and discovery. Then we have the one that we're opening, uh, putting the call for strengthening internet trustworthiness, service and data portability, and open internet architecture. And then we follow with three more topics in the, the year after, which we'll have to find. But this is more or less the plan. And then we'll integrate it with Horizon Europe and where NGI is actually an intervention area. So yeah, join us in this exciting journey. If you need a specific information, you can go to ngi.eu 
where we have uh, one hour long webinars on each of the subtopics of the call with all the information there. And if you have any question, you can always go to ngi.eu. We have a very active community and they will help you with anything you need. And that's all. And I believe now we have you with Cap Digital. Yeah, questions, yeah. No, behind you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, is it loaded or? The presentation of the woman, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Uh, I okay. Okay, sorry. So, Cap Digital, it's based in Paris, and we are the biggest uh, business cluster dedicated to digital economy and sustainable development in Europe. We play a role as a facilitator, agitator, composed of more than 1,000 members, mostly SMEs and startups. Uh, you, we can rely on a highly qualified team of 45 staff members and we have a community of 140 experts that we work with us. We cover uh, six main areas, so four markets, smart cities, health, CCI, industry and services, and two cross-sector Ed tech training and talents and technology data and AI. Our services, we provide support RED, we boost our uh, startups acceleration program, uh, we help in digital transformation, trainings and knowledge sharing. We organize the biggest, the largest uh, festival, it's free and open, dedicated to innovation in Europe. If you want to get inspired, meet uh, our network and uh, our investors, you are welcome. You can benefit from our ecosystem and network. We have uh, experience in uh, more than 20 EU projects. Our expertise as a coordinator and our work package leader in community engagement, matchmaking between startup and big companies, organization of open goals, business modeling, support to startup, internationalization and soft lending, dissemination, and also organization of events. What we can offer for this call, uh, Cap Digital, it's a NGI national contact point in France, and we share a common human-centric vision of technology. As a triple helix organization, we gather the booming French tech ecosystem, and we are able to attract the top French internet talents. We have also a strong ex experience in open call and selecting the best innovators. And we are used to deliver solid value additive services, including coaching and monitoring. So if you are interested in us, do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much. We also had another request from IMEC to do a presentation. I don't know if the presenter arrived meanwhile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Can we put it in the... Yeah. Oh, you need my presentation. <laughs> Morning, everybody. I'm uh, a professor at, uh, at IMAC and Ghent University, and um, I'm going to talk a 
about um, the, the, the stuff we do with the components here in the cloud, uh, namely the, the new solid components that are coming. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm part of IMAP. IMAP is the, the famous scale research institute uh, in, in, in Belgium. We're based in, uh, in Leuven, uh, but the, the software part of this is based in Ghent. Uh, about 40 professors and uh, in general about 2,000 classrooms uh, research students who work in the cloud and in the cloud. Oh, sorry, I'm being recorded too. All right. Um, now, well, well, what we see is that uh, at the current internet that uh, the big ones like, uh, like Facebook, um, they have all the power because uh, they, have, uh, they have the data. So uh, the customer becomes, uh, becomes the, in fact, uh, the, the product. Now, um, what if you want to change providers? Let's uh, just take the example of, uh, of photos. So uh, let's say all our photos are on Flickr or, uh, or on, on Google, and, and you want to change stuff. So uh, it's not easy to combine all your photos. So this is what you have to do. Uh, if you want to move your photos from Flickr to Google, according to Google. Now, uh, the, the, the funny part is when, when you see, it may take a bit of work. Uh, we all know it, uh, it really takes lots of work. So it's, it's really not feasible from uh, an end user point, point of view. And, uh, and also, uh, it's not only for, uh, for the end user. So the end user, it's an extreme hassle to do some, uh, to do some stuff. And it's also, uh, as, as just said, it's uh, very uneasy to combine uh, these services, if not uh, impossible to combine these services on, uh, on the same data, right? But also from, uh, from a service provider point of view, if you're uh, a, a new kind of, if, if you want to, to go into, into business as, a, as an SME, um, well, you, you have to have high investment and it's a high risk to really introduce your, um, your new services um, because, well, lots of, um, of, of the power goes back to these giants because uh, whenever you uh, log in um, into Facebook, because that's, uh, that's how to, to get indeed um, directly a, b a big uh, user portion, you directly, um, well, get into their realm and, and, and the data is not yours anymore. And so it's very, very difficult to, uh, to, to make money. And without all this data, it's also uh, very um, difficult to, to do uh, new stuff. Uh, current, current AI is there, you need lots of data, otherwise uh, it will not work. So in fact, unfortunately, uh, this is what it's all about. Uh, it's the data that uh, that really makes makes everything. Now, what we, uh, together with Tim Berners Lee and uh, and my team, think is that okay, it's not sustainable anymore. Um, we know, and and I, on the bottom part, we have three good reasons why it's not uh, sustainable anymore. So there's the legal pressure uh, pressure uh, GDPR wise, um, where if we think in in the complete different way, if we if we think of uh, of uh, data pods where um, all the users uh, are owner of their own data, well, this will um, directly be, uh, be solved, right? There's also uh, societal pressure where uh, we, we all know about all these big, big data leaks uh, of all the big uh, uh, providers. And I already told you, it's very difficult to, uh, to innovate a lot. Eh? If you look at Facebook, when did they innovate? Eh? They uh, definitely not on... Um, on their end uh, user stuff. So, um, well, it's the third time that the inventor of the in internet is, is going to try to, uh, to change stuff. So he did it the first time together with the Belgian, at Caillou, uh, in, in the 90s. The second time around 2000 when he said, like, like uh, we don't only need uh, an internet where we can click through as a, as a human user, but uh, the internet should be also automatically um, digestible by, uh, via machines. So uh, we put uh, a semantic version on top of that. And now uh, together with, with my team, we're, we're trying to um, reverse the realm and look um, from, the, from, the, from the way uh, of, of, the end, uh, of the end user. 
Um, of course, uh, this is uh, this is Dutch because uh, Ruben also has uh, has made statement in, in in that way. So what we think of that, um, how we should uh, should uh, look at it is we we have to look at um, the end user ourselves. So you, me, we are the ones uh, who should take control. We all will have personal data pots where every uh, every data of about uh, ourselves will have to be stored. And of course, we will have different data pots eh? with different sensitivity levels, uh, different access control lists, uh, di the different deta data retention policies, and some of our data pots will have different lifespans. Eh? So uh, maybe we have a health-related data pot that, uh, that will start from the day we're born until the day we die, but it could be that um, we have temporary data pots that can only be used by certain uh, certain uh, applications for a certain period uh, of time. So, um, how do we see it? So, let's look uh, again at the social uh, at the social feed. So, uh, this could be a, um, a Facebook-like um, um, event, right? So, on the top, you see uh, the author's name and and his latest profile. This is information that is stored at. Uh, my, if it's my uh, view, it's stored on my data pot. Uh, it could say, it could be that uh, I want to say something about my work, so I reuse uh, data from uh, from my uh, from my company. But this is data from my company, so this part of the data will be stored at some data pot of my of my company. It could be that I, I use uh, a photo from some news agency. Again, this photo will be stored in the data pot of uh, the news website. And then, of course, um, whatever I tell, uh, I have friends and, and, and people who follow me, so they will give me thumbs up or thumbs down or, or give comments. But these comments are not my comments. It's the comments from the people who like or dislike, so, uh, dislike it. So all these uh, thumbs up, it's small bits of data, but this, these small bits of data will be put on your own data pot, right? Not mine, not the company's one. This is my uh, my reaction to something, and then uh, the same the same is true for uh, for bigger uh, parts of um, um, of information that you want you you want to uh, to have on this. Of course, um, this means that we have to rethink uh, almost everything. Eh? So on the left we have like it's now. Uh, we have centralized web applications where, in fact, all the big ones of everybody really um, has the same, uh, has, has their data somewhere centralized on, on big servers. So Facebook owns my contact list, owns my pictures, owns my agenda. The same is true for LinkedIn. They own my, uh, my, my, my contact list and Doodle owns my agenda. You see that also, uh, it's also every time it's data replication. Eh? I need my data or my data is at more than one place. We do not want that. What we really want is completely decentralized where everything of my data, my agenda, my pictures, my contact list is on my personal data pod somewhere. And in fact, web applications are seen as views, as views on all this data, okay? Um, it does not, um, I, we, th th there's still lots of competition. Now there will be competition on two levels. You have competition on, the, on storage and you have competition uh, on, um, uh, on the applications itself, right? It will be much easier as a newcomer if I, if I invent something like a social feed, it will be much easier to compete with Facebook in this way, okay? Um, of course, um, not only uh, the way of how we storage and the way of, uh, of how um, applications become views on all this distributed data will change, but also APIs will change. So for, for the moment, um, again, Facebook, you have uh, application-specific lo uh, logic that talks to, in, in, indeed, the same server-specific interface of, uh, of Facebook, which is hard-coded. So all other servers out there that want to kind of interact with, um, with these Facebook-like things, it's not possible. They are all incompatible for the moment. So what we see and what we are already working on um, at my team and at, uh, at MIT is um, ways of um, automatically 
trying to um, combine all these um, distributed data out there and, uh, and, and, and get, uh, ha we, we have worked on, uh, on a client-side library where um, we can easily uh, interface with any data pod out there. It's called uh, Communica and it's a completely open source. So um, try, try to already uh, fi find it out there. And this is an engine um, where completely agnostic of uh, all the interfaces out there, but um, it can, it's the only way we, uh, we, we need to uh, indeed um, query with uh, application specific logic in a decentralized way. So this is how, um, how, we, see, how we see the, uh, the future. Uh, we want to get rid of uh, competition that is solely based on, uh, on data ownership. We really want to separate the, the data market and, and the app market, but again, eh, completely, it's a, it's a free world, so there's competition on the data market. If I want to set my data pods uh, at Google or at Amazon, Microsoft, or whatever data provider, um, it's okay. Um, but it's, uh, it's much easier for uh, new companies to, uh, to come up with, um, with, with, uh, with applications that can compete with, uh, with the big ones uh, out there. Um, yeah, and uh, we're already doing that for, uh, for a long time. So uh, at, um, at iMac, um, we work on end-to-end on, uh, -end on this solution. So together with Tim Berners-Lee, we're working really on, on the data backend, um, which is called Solid for the moment. But also, um, um, and, and I think this is, uh, what, what is it? Um, um, the, the readiness level of, of Solid, it's about uh, yeah, uh, two to four, um, but we have, um, we're, we're uh, working on also um, mapping all these data so at the at the first the, the first level which is called uh, rml and um let's say the the inventor of uh, rml is uh, in the room it's uh, anastasia one of my co-workers and that is already at uh, at prl level uh, seven to uh, to eight and we're also working on um, uh, query engines that that um, make it possible to completely decentralize, um, uh, get the que uh, federated queries completely decentralized, that's called uh, linked data fragments, and there the, communi uh, the com Communica uh, client library is, uh, is, is part of it. Um, as said, we, we try to um, only use web standards and drive standardization in, in W3C. My team is, I think, um, within several uh, working groups uh, there. And we have reference, open source reference re uh, uh, implementations um, of all of it. Right? So um, if you want to work together with us on new projects, um, I'm, I'm here. I have another colleague uh, of IMAC sitting there, Wade, and Anastasia Wade. So just come and, uh, and talk to us. Thank you. Any questions? How, 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 how do you see the transition from the current use of the over-the-top players into yeah. these new concepts? Um, this is the, okay, the, the one million dollar question, we know. Um, I think it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be difficult. We're, we're trying to find the sweet spot of, uh, of, of, of what kind of companies who, um, who really, uh, think the same way. And uh, I think, um, well, we, we, we get lots of uh, traction now because Tim Berners-Lee is, is really advocating it and, and also uh, Ruben is really advocating it. And the, the first two that, that come in mind, that come to us um, uh, directly, is I think um, once the companies that see uh, the value of getting also data from uh, competitors, for example, in some way, eh? not for free, but in some way. So um, retailers, for example, so you have uh, the uh, yeah, big, big retail, uh, retailers that now have loyalty cards. And um, well, um, in, in some way, 
um, with the way we, uh, we, we, we see it, it's possible to have kind of um, privacy preserving data brokers where um, information from one retailer can go to the other and vice versa so they can e uh, more easily tailor the, the end consumer because it's all my data, right? And the second one is, uh, is, is banks and insurance companies who, uh, who um, now begin to think like, okay, what are we good at? Uh, that, that everything that has to do with money um, or insurances, but we don't really want to own the data of the end users. We just want to target them better. So um, we're, uh, it, it's not one bank. We are already talking with uh, three or four banks that without them knowing came to us to think about uh, the future of, of how to best interact with an end consumer. So I, I also like uh, yes, yesterday, it's already the, the, the second um, talk on, on NGI. You, you, I, you, we, we all see that, that something has to change, that um, it's not good that the, the, the GAFA ones own all the data. Um, but you're right, eh? it's, uh, it's, the, it's the major question, what will, what will be the tipping point in when there will be enough momentum and everybody will change, yeah, you're right. It's a, a, that's a difficult one. But that's why NGI is, I think, here and, uh, and we have to really um, at least come up with, uh, with, a, with a complete technical solution. So thanks, thanks for the, the talk, nice talk. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is related to the to the privacy and the security of the data, you didn't discuss about that. But basically, what will prevent big player to uh, steal the data? So it didn't say anything about that. Because the data is uh, inside my pod, I have my own data pod, yes. but since I expose this data, everybody can take the data and sell the data. Um, no, no, it's, uh, it's also up to the end consumer of what to expose when. Eh? It's, it's not open data by default. Eh? Okay, so that's, that means that there is something that uh, uh, protect all my data with some kind of security, some yeah. key. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So access control, um, um, security is is a big issue, okay. and we're working also. Uh, we're this is not our expertise, but we're working with um, uh, with research experts on that. Okay, so thanks, thanks. So there's, uh, there's definitely three teams working on solid. Okay, great. So and the, the second question is much more on the the economic model of. Uh, new actors that want to build, for example, if tomorrow I want to build something, uh, a new Facebook system, Yes. Okay. what will be my economic model if I cannot steal the data, if I cannot sell the data? Ah, be inventive. Huh? So now it's not the data, but it's, uh, it's you. If you come up with a new ID, I, I do not know, huh? uh, maybe, um, yeah, it, it's a service that's going to make the difference, huh? not the data. Because, because basically, I mean, since, since I'm running the web server, to mm -hmm. expose all those data. This costs a lot from the data center viewpoint, from the resource viewpoint. I have to pay the bill for all those servers that will expose the, the web services, basically. So which means that from the economic model, the, the, the cost of the player that expose the service. Uh -huh. this uh, it, it, well, it, it will come with the cost. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, it's not for free. So uh, maybe you as an end consumer, you will, have to, uh, you will have to pay more to have your data pods out there, but you will also get more in return because you will be, you will be the one selling your data to the service provider. No? And it could be that, that, yeah, that, it's, uh, it's, um, that it's, again, some advertisement that will make the money for the new Facebook or something like that. It's a service that will make the difference, not the data. But again, you will be owner of the data, like it should be. Thank you. I was kind of, uh, I didn't know, did not know that I had to present now. I thought it was somewhere tomorrow. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll just end the presentation. Yeah, but it was not clear when, uh, oh. All right. when it should come. Well, thank you very much. I don't know if there are any questions regarding the ICT call. If there are no more questions, uh, back to the topic. ICT 2431, no questions. All right. That's, yeah. So the program. Testing. The program that's opening up um, 
is for organizations that will then redistribute, is for collaborations that will then redistribute the funds. Mm -hmm. But you had also one that closed uh, in April of this year under the same program heading, right? And those or those collaborations are going to be soon opening up to yes. the thir the next set of parties. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, can we put my slides again? One second. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, we had four projects that started uh, in September, October, and one of them is already launching, well, two of them are already launching their open calls. They, they opened those open calls at the beginning of December, mm -hmm. and they're gonna launch another pack of calls in February, but this is a process, it's gonna repeat itself, yeah. Where is information about those? NGI.eu, it has all the publication about the open calls and the information, the deadlines, uh, everything is there. Okay, yeah. and w under what heading, what's the name Where for those? Can yeah. I skip uh, reorganizing the calls that are going to die on March 30 and doing uh, a good for the next, to, to distribute funds down the, right. down the line. Okay. So funding will get raised for the summer of 2019, which is different for cycles. Um, so there's gonna be one project that will operate and basically for cycle funding amount, every two months for the open ones. Uh, the first one will be in February, which is in this day. But there's gonna be also other projects that will have um, other calls that will be distributed across the next basically two and a half weeks. European Commission. I funded search engines for 10 years and I see some lo lovely faces. So we had a big consultation, the first consultation on NGI. And the, if you read the report, people said that the instruments that we now use, these PPPs, these top-down, these three-year projects with deliverables that never read, are not the right instruments for NGI. And therefore, they wanted rapid prototyping of a num you know, and, and lots of testing of small, very radical, innovative ideas. So that's why we have this approach with four projects that essentially act as banks and do the evaluation processing much faster. So if you, if you actually, um, the project only started, say, uh, a month ago. The call is already announced 1st of December, and in two months they're going to distribute the money in small installments. So it's really ideal for individuals and groups because it's like 50,000 to 200K. And then the real strategy problem with this real EU-wide innovation is to put the pieces together because we are like, you know, distrib you know we are micro-financing everything in this area. But it not, didn't come from the commission, it came from you guys telling us that we need a new approach for rapid prototyping and at some point integration based on, for example, the question of what are the use cases or what is a competitive advantage or what serves this industry and what serves the citizens. So we are learning as we go. But again, um, it's not the, com the commission is just facilitating. So it's really very active on your part. And I don't know that, uh, and everything will be on that NGI website. But I think you can use this big conference, which has something like 6,000 people. It's like the biggest success ever, thanks to Austria. And so use, use your contacts and, and your knowledge. You do the work. We just, <laughs> we're just happy to support it. So it's, it's a much more dynamic process, integration of innovation for a much larger. Oh, also I should say, but I think our director will say it right after lunch in the NGI session. Um, that it should be a mission-oriented long-term. Um, we want to take back the internet. So, I mean, we want you to take back your data and, and the internet. And, and Europe wants to not be a consumer, but a producer. So I'm very happy that the, the, the same leading groups um, are, are in this room to do that. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder, there's an NGI session on plen plenary uh, after lunch. I think it's at 2.30 starts uh, with the director and yeah. Any other questions, call related? 
Perfect. Then thank you very much for being here. If you have any questions, NGI.eu. Thank you very much.